I went to pick, uh, to buy this uh, this new Pearl Jam album that had just come out, and I was there at like midnight the night before. You line up at the record store. I got it, and because I was first in line, I got like all these other things with it. I had like this cool hat. It was like a fisherman's hat. It was like you know cool. I said Pearl Jam on it. And I said put the hat on. I had like a poster that wouldn't fold, so it was like kind of holding the poster awkwardly. I had my CD in my hand, and I go down to the parking lot, and this carload of dudes slows down as they as they drive by. One goes nerd. And I was like, oh, man, the poor dude behind me. <laughs> Wait a minute. How about we give a big round of applause for Rob Benedict? All right. Hi. Hi. How's it going? Good. Oh, good. Yeah, it's a long walk. <laughs> long walk. Take your time. <laughs> I'm definitely getting my steps in. Getting the old steps in. You know, you're getting old when you keep talking about getting your steps in. <laughs> I get bummed out, though. I looked at my, my phone from yesterday, and it was like 6,000. I was like, come on. There's more than that. That's it. Yeah. It's not counting it right. And I got little legs, so I've got a lot of steps. Ruth Connell, when she walks, she's got billions of steps. Because she's like, do 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 <laughs> uh, Anyway. Um, well, all right. Um, you know, you're welcome to step up to the mic and ask a question. Otherwise, I'll just talk. I'll just babble. But uh, I see a person walking up. I'm getting ready to answer the question that you have. Now, hi. Hi. Uh, you did some great impressions yesterday. Very briefly, we got one of Ruth. Uh -huh. I was wondering, for those who haven't heard it, if you could tell us the free pour story. <laughs> but, like, do the full Ruth impression right. for us. Okay, so... <laughs> uh, so, we went to... I do every, every year, I take this vacation uh, in Maine where uh, all my old college friends gather at this sort of remote place in Maine. It's beautiful, right on the water. Um, we each family has a cabin, so it's me and my kids and, uh, and Ruth. And, and this group of friends, we, uh, a lot of my old theater friends, um, and, you know, theater people, they, we party. And so, like, the first night there is always the worst in terms of partying. We're drinking a lot. We're catching up. There's lots of laughs. Uh, and uh, so we, we poured ourselves drinks, you know, and um, like you do. And then sort of co coincidentally, uh, not coincidentally, just it just so happens that the, in the middle of the night, that, that first night, I woke up with a pain in my chest. And... Um, and it was concerning, so we went to the hospital, and I ended up, it ended up I had something called periditis, uh, pericarditis, which is like, it's basically like an inflammation around your heart. It's nothing, my, all my heart tested well. I was perfectly healthy. It's just, it's almost like a, the doctor described it as having like a cold around your heart. It's like a, like a, a um, yeah, like a, a cold around your heart. You take, all you can take for it is like ibuprofen, and eventually it just, it goes away. But Ruth was convinced that it had to do with this heavy partying I'd done the night before. Not that I'm not going to hear sit here and go like, well, it didn't because I know, maybe certainly I wasn't living the healthiest that night. But um, she wanted to make sure the doctor knew, and she turned on her full Scottish for this doctor, and she's like, "Oh, doctor, it was the free poor, it was the free poor," and he was like, "I." I don't, uh, I don't know what that means. And, you know, in, in England, that's a thing because, you know, they, they measure shots very carefully. But for my, for, for, so we, me and my buddies, we were just like, you know, tequila in a glass. But who's the free poor doctor and the weed? <laughs> and the doctor's like, oh, it sounds a little bit like you're in trouble. And I was like, yeah, this one, huh? Yeah, she's like, no. And he was like, no, I don't think it has anything to do with that. It's, it's actually my brother and my sister have both had pericarditis. So it was like, this is, I think it just kind of runs in the family. It's hereditary. He's like, no, it was the free poor. So we, then that became a thing that all my friends there kept saying free poor. And this year, um, my one friend made t-shirts <laughs> It said, uh, you know, the main gathering in free poor Maine. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. The free poor. My other great, um, my great Ruth um, saying is like we were, 
arguing about something, which is not a good idea, because she'll win. So um, I was, and I broke right out of the argument and died laughing when in the middle of it, she goes, poor you, Rob, <laughs> poor you. And I was like, oh my God, that's amazing. You just went full Scottish on me, and that's adorable. <laughs> so that broke me right out of it, and I haven't crossed her since. Um, anyway, so that's the free poor. Free poor. Oh, that's my Ruth Connell. Hi. So I've been asking this to some of the actors. Um, there's been a bit of talk lately with uh, stuff about aliens and UFOs. What is your opinion on all of that? Dude, I'm flipping out. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like it should be like front page every day. Like the, a, a dude who works for the government testified under oath that, oh yeah, by the way, we actually have some non-human remains. So in my book, that's like confirmation that where there's alien life. Now you might say, oh well, yeah, I figured as much, but no, we got proof. Okay, okay. so people are saying, like I've, I've heard like scientists say like, that's amazing, but let's see proof. Like we'd like to see proof before we run it. But I just think that's, to me, that's a mind-blowing, mind-resetting fact. Like, okay, so maybe we're living in an age where actually we do have proof that there's alien life, and maybe the UFOs this whole time, maybe that was a real thing. I don't know, I just thought that, that really freaked me out. So I'm intrigued, I'm scared, but I'm intrigued that, that there's actually alien life out there. We have, we have non-human remains. That's fucking creepy. So anyway, I'm all in to finding out more about that. And I just hope it amounts to something and it's not like, oh, what we meant was, you know, uh, I, I just hope it really is like some kind of like, I don't know, like an alien body or something. Um, what, what could it be? I don't know, my mind can't even go there. So anyway, I don't know. I can't remember what your question is, but I'm excited about it. Uh, I, I like any news like that that's like, you know, kind of resets your mentality for a second and re re redefine what your reality is. So, yeah, that, that could be exciting. And then the other night we watched um, War of the Worlds just because my son hadn't seen it and I hadn't seen it since it came out. And, and it's good. It's, it holds up. It's, uh, uh, it's a good Tom Cruise movie there. But, um, yeah, so then, then, then when that happened, I was like, oh, wow, I wonder if... That, that could actually happen now, <laughs> which we don't want. We don't want that. So it was bad. It was bad news for us. Except in the end, we, we won. So I don't know. Spoiler alert. We, we win. Anyway, I'm excited. I'm excited about the aliens. So bring it on. Hi, Rob. I'm Heather. And I had the pleasure of meeting you for the first time in Chicago in 2009, which I believe was your first uh, con. It was my that. first con. And I just wanted to tell you, it was so adorable how nervous you were. So that, nervous. And I, I'm just so pleased at how well you're doing alone on stage now. Thank you. I've come a long way. Has, have you found anything particularly helpful with the anxiety of being, you know, on stage and never knowing what people might ask you? Yeah, you know, it's funny because like I'm, I'm, I was always comfortable being on stage playing a part. Um, but I was never as comfortable sort of just being sort of asked questions. I could even like, I was MC of stuff in college all the time, but I don't know, just like, just the idea that like, I hadn't really, so I grew up, I mean, when I started acting for the first 15 years of my career, like you just didn't do that kind of thing. There was no opportunity to talk to people who are watching your, your work, who would ask you questions about the work. So it was just so new to me. But what was even weirder about that is, the episode I was in where there's a con in the episode had just aired. Yes. So I, then I go on stage in Chicago and it was kind of like literally the night before the character I played was in a con in the episode. Yeah. And then I come out kind of doing the same thing, kind of shaking with the mic and a bottle of water. And uh, that was one of the weirdest things about it. I was like, oh my God, this is really happening. Um, I remember I followed Julie McNiven and um, she's really cute and sweet. And uh, I thought, well, I'll just go for it. And the best part about it was that like, it's just like the nicest audience. Like it's the most forgiving audience you'll ever be around because it's people who, who actually want to see what you have to say and, and are okay if, you, if you're a dork and you say <laughs> weird things and you're awkward, you know? The awkwardness is embraced. Yeah. So I guess, yeah, you know, over now I've been doing it ever since then nonstop. So now of course I'm more used to it. 
And uh, I've just done so many of them now, it just you know, it comes a little more naturally to me yeah. now. But that's really the biggest takeaway for me with this whole experience is that uh, everyone seems to embrace your awkwardness. And so that's what I've done is like embrace my crazy, you know, <laughs> and honestly, I feel like I've come out as a crazy person. I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I finally started to admit that the songs I write are the parts of it that are about myself, you know, and, um, you know, the song Medicated that I sing, you know, I'd, I'd written that by that time, but I'd never told anybody that it was, you know, that it was true that I really was medicated, you know, and then like, you know, through this family, I feel like it's become okay, you know, and I started admitting the downtown letdown, that song was about my own struggles with depression and um, insecurity and all that, and um, so I've been able to sort of you know, I don't know if come out is the right word, but be open about that, but my struggles with that stuff. And so, and, and, and know that I, I land in a, in a nice, warm, dry place with yeah. everybody here and everybody's embraces that. And so, um, yeah, it's just the nicest crowd and that, that's helpful. You know, I, 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 when I first got started, I did a lot of stand-up comedy. And so I, you get a little fearful of like cold crowds, you know, who, who not only don't laugh, but don't like you if you're not making them laugh, you know, and, um, that didn't happen often, but when it did, it was tough. Um, so I think that's where part of that too insecurity came from, but this is, this audience is so nice. So anyway, that helps. Thanks. Thanks. Hello. Hi. Uh, so you, you've talked a lot about how you take you know, inspiration from yourself in your own life when, when you write. Is there anything else that inspires you or when you're sitting down to write, is there a sp sort of environment that helps you kind of get into that, that headspace? Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, it kind of has to be, you know, it just has to be like, the, yeah, the, um, like the ideal time would be like when I don't have anything else pressing that that's due in the next couple of hours, you know, or any responsibilities, you know. Um, it's hard to write if you know that in 45 minutes you've got to leave to go pick up your kid from school or whatever, you know. Um, it's nice to have an alone space. Um, you know, so, sometimes like if, if I know the kids are gonna be gone and Ruth has something to do and I'm by myself at, at, at night in the house, I'm like, I bring my guitar downstairs. I'm like, this is gonna be a good songwriting atmosphere for me. So yeah, that would be the ideal for me is like an empty house and, and nothing to do, you know, and you just have a couple hours to yourself. I would say like the guitar is like my cigarette. It's like, it's just a chance to sort of, I don't smoke anymore, but like when I used to, it was like, you kind of, it's not only the smoking you're addicted to, you're addicted to just the minute just to take a little bit of a breather outside or whatever. But that's, the guitar is my smoke break. Um, so yeah, that's the ideal for me is being alone. Um, and yeah, and then certainly so, sometimes you just not, that you know, I brought my guitar downstairs or gone up, okay, I'm gonna try to write something now and it just nothing comes, you know? And sometimes it strikes you at the weirdest time and like, I'm like, oh shit, that's great, that's good, I like that melody, I gotta get that down, okay. Okay, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this right now, you know, because it just strikes you and you don't want it to go away, you know. So, I was telling, in my meet and greet, I was talking about that last night I had a guitar in the hotel room, I chose not to go out, which was a big step for me, guys. Uh, I never, I have like FOMO in the biggest way, I never don't go out. And if there's somebody out, Alex was like, yeah, me and DJ are getting a drink, and I was like, oh, I want to go. And I had just had him describe what it was like and how things were, but I didn't go. I didn't go. And I stayed in and I wrote a song. So that was cool. Yeah, so it was a good chance to really do that because I had a guitar in the hotel room. I had nowhere to be. My job was done for the day, you know. And so, and I was kind of in the mood after the show. So, um, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I hope that answered your question. Good. Hey, hi. hi. Um, so first, I just want to say the concert last night was like amazing. It was so good. Thank you so much. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Thank you. All right. So just a random question. What's um, a song that when you hear like come on the radio or whatever, you have to sing along with? Ha. Um, <laughs> um, well, oh, man, they're like some Prince songs, like um, uh, uh, Starfish and Coffee, uh, you know, I mean, Little Red Corvette, um, 
when doves cry, like, I don't know, for some reason the Prince songs are coming to mind, like, that comes on the radio, I'm, I'm like, check me out for four minutes, because I'm singing this song. Um, <laughs> So yeah, that, that, and I'm sure there are others that are more like, Im I'm embarrassed that I sing along to. Um, but uh, yeah, that Prince always gets me, like, you know, um, and then it gets stuck in your head. Um, and certainly there's some fun Beatles songs. I, I, I listen to Sirius XM, so there's the Beatle chan Beatles channel, I have the Pearl Jam channel, and I have Spectrum, but then I, if I, then I get bored of those and I just listen to my own stuff, but... But yeah, Prince, um, Starfish and Coffee especially, and um, yeah, I guess that's my answer. Okay. Yeah, you. thanks, yeah, I do that all the time. You know, one time, I think I told this story before, I was in college, I sing in my car, I sing in my car like I'm playing like at PNC Park, like I'm playing like Pink last night, and I'm, I'm, I sing my face off, and, and when I was in college, a buddy of mine saw me in the car and I didn't know, and he was walking, I guess, and I was driving, it was my senior year, and, He's like, hey, man, I saw you in the car. You're really going, going for it. And I was like, oh, no. I was mortified. You know, I was like early 20s. But I must have just been like, yeah, you know, really like singing some Pearl Jam song or something and really thinking I was in concert. Anyway. Hey, Hi. Rob. I have Hi. a statement and then a question. OK. A um, couple of statements. Yes, the concert last night was awesome. I loved it. And I know you're uh, coming up on 10 years post-stroke in a couple of months. Yeah. Uh, congratulations on that. Thank you. Because had I not seen Don't Call Me Shirley and not heard you sing and went down the YouTube rabbit hole, I wouldn't be here. Thank you. Thank you. And, you know, you talk about the early days of Swain, you know, play into a couple of people in a bar or play into your family, and now you're playing to you know, one, 2,000 people once a month. Yeah. Has that, has, has that changed, y'all? No, I don't think it has. I think, you know, because it took us so long to really build until we were at that level, um, it's kind of like me and my act, acting career, career. Like, nothing has ever come too quick that we weren't ready for it. Mm -hmm. So by the time we did have those big audiences, we were ready for that. We'd we'd put in the hours, and we were ready for that. So I don't think I don't think we've changed. It's it's more like we're really having fun, and we feel like all of our hard work, all of these years, is paying off. And you know, we're we're really tight as a band because we played together for so long. Um, and I, I feel that way in my career as well. Like nothing has ever come too quick. Like I I put in the work, I put in the hours, and and I'm ready for it. You know, and I think that's that's true with the band. Um, yeah, and it's, it's really fun. Y'all look like you're having, I mean, every show I go to, it seems like you're having, more, having so much fun. We really are. Yeah, we really are. And the more we, we play, the better we get. And, and, and you know, like, like I said yesterday, we were never really a cover band, but now we've had to sort of learn these covers. And when you learn other kinds of music and other people's music, it makes you better as a musician. You, you learn new secrets and new tricks and new songwriting techniques. And um, I think that's helped us a lot as well. But... No, it's just, it's just great. I mean, you know, for me personally, the band, I always, just, I always used to say that it was my extracurricular activity, you know? That was what I would say 20 years ago. But, you know, now it's really like, really so intertwined with everything else that I do, you know? Um, that it's, it's, you know, I almost used to like write it off, like, oh, well, you know? But it, it really is, it, it, it's, it's so important to me. And, and uh, I think the reason I, I used to say that is because like, I never wanted to put the pressure on myself as a musician that I had to make money or I needed people to hear my music because like, I put pressure on myself as an actor for that, as the bread and butter for me. Um, I really, I really want to keep working. That's, that's really my job. That's what I do. And I, I just didn't want to put that on music, which was such a love and passion of mine. I didn't want to put that kind of pressure because it almost... I don't know, felt that it would sour it or something, something that could be really fun. Um, so to, have, to, to, to not have an expectation, to, to, to write music that I never, I never write music thinking like, everyone's going to dance to this, or this is going to be number one, or whatever. Like, I never have that expectation of anything like that. So the fact that people sing along lyrics is such a, a, such an enormous joy and compliment, I can't even tell you. It's so huge and unexpected and, and so appreciated. Um, 
and and not expected. So it's it's um, it's been a great it's been a great sort of icing on the cake of yeah. of this whole gift that is the you know the convention circuit. Because I don't know about anybody else, but honestly, Saturday night special is the reason why I go to cons now. Thank you so much. That's awesome. That's a huge and compliment. Everything else is extra. Thank you so much. That's awesome. That's great. That's great to hear. Yeah, we love doing it. Thank you. Don't stop. We won't. <laughs> we won't. Hi. Hi. Um, so my question is, if you had to pick a song for like your personal anthem, like it played every time you walked into a room, what would it be? Oh my God. <laughs> um, <laughs> me, Rob. Me, not, not the character I play, but me, Rob. You, Rob. Okay. Yes. Um, maybe Alive by Pearl Jam. Um, that's, a, that's a banger. And it's, uh, you know, I, I feel like, um, I heard Eddie Vedder once say that he first wrote that song sort of ironically, kind of like, great, I'm alive, you know, but I've got this shit in my life. And, like, and then he says the song is morphed for him, and now it's a joyous, like, I'm alive, you know, like I'm still kicking. And, um, and so I thought that's what that means to me. It's like I was talking about my tattoo yesterday, like being in my heartbeat. Like I just, I feel like the older I get and the more things that I've gone through, the more I'm like, wow, I'm still weathering the storm, you know, and I'm proud of the fact that I'm still kicking it. I'm here. So I guess it would be that alive. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. That's fun to think about. Every time I walk in a room, that's awesome. People get really annoyed at that. It'd be like a party. <laughs> Whoa, I'm still alive. Oh, Christ, Rob's here. Every t really? <laughs> do we have to do that every time? We're just like at a Starbucks. <laughs> anyway, hi. Hi, you've given me a challenge because I have three different questions and I don't want to monopolize your time. Do uh, it. By the way, um, also thank you, especially thank you for the concert, considering Pittsburgh's muggy, icky weather t last night. Yeah, it was great. It was actually just beautiful. It was a um, great locale. Uh, if you had your choice of a question, would you want one introspective, uh, silly, or um, uh, on your own personal history? Give me, give me. Can you ask all three and I'll try them all? Really? Yeah. Okay. All right, the first question would be, uh -huh. what was your favorite joke that you would tell when you did stand-up? Okay, second one? Second one is, uh, tell us a little about your, th your background in theater, because you've mentioned it a couple of times, but you've only like given us little tastes. Great. Third one is one that I asked Alexander. Alexander copped out. David hit it out of the ballpark. Oh, boy. That one is... What question would you like us to ask, and what's the answer to that question? Jeez, Louise, those are good. <laughs> okay, the best uh, joke I told when I was doing stand-up, you know, I told a lot of, um, like, personal, real personal stories, and then I would, like, weave them in. Um, one of my, my favorite uh, personal, real personal stories is um, I... Uh, well, I had a couple. Anyway, uh, well, w one of them is like I went to um, I went to pick, uh, to buy this uh, this new Pearl Jam album that had just come out, and I was there at like midnight the night before. You line up at the record store. I got it, and because I was first in line, I got like all these other things with it. I had like this cool hat. It was like a fisherman's hat. It was like you know, cool, I said Pearl Jam on it, and I said, put the hat on. I had like a poster that wouldn't fold, so it was like kind of holding the poster awkwardly. I had my CD in my hand, and I go down to the parking lot, and this carload of dudes slows down as they, as they drive by, and one goes, nerd! And I was like, oh man, the poor dude behind me. <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute, and I had this whole like existential, like wait, am I a nerd? And I, and I went home to my wife at the time, and I was like, Hey, honey, am, am I a nerd? I told her the story. She's like, those guys in the car, they're just cool guys. And I was like, oh, well, that doesn't, okay. So where's, so how does that, 
Um, and then I'd weed that into other things, but that was kind of where I would start. And the other funny thing that happened to me when I was a kid, unrelated, is I was really like little and skinny and slight. I had long hair, and my mom gave me a credit card for gas. It was just at the gas station, so I could fill it up after I turned 16. So I'm 16. Um, I'm with like my my dude buddies, and we, we I go in the gas station. And I put down the the car to pay for it, and the guy in the middle of Missouri, and the guy's like. What kind of name is Rob or girl? <laughs> and I go, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. I just gave up in that moment. I was like, you know, I, I, I don't know. I'm uh, eccentric parents. I don't know. I, I just like let him have it. You know, I let him have that. Um, theater, I did a lot of um, like... Uh, I started doing community theater when I was a kid, and my, my parents, when I was really little, my dad was still around, they, were, they started a community theater, and so I would do these plays. And then the theater got kind of big, and into my teenage years, I would do um, roles, and I just really caught the bug. I just was like, at like 14, I was like, I wanna do this with my life. And um, yeah, and there, there were a lot, of, a lot of colleges in Columbia, and, um, and one of the colleges had put on a play where the lead roles it has to be a kid. So I was in this college play, and to me that was the big time. And it was, um, and so I was like, I want to do this. So I went to Northwestern University in Chicago, and I studied theater. And it was always my goal to like be an actor, and this is what I'm going to do. And uh, and when I first got to LA, I, I graduated. I drove right out to LA, and um, I was waiting tables like you do. And I, I, my first sort of professional job was at a theater. I, I did a couple of plays. I was in a couple of plays that I did actually do a year of, commu of uh, regional theater plays. So I did the Alabama Shakespeare Festival and, I, um, in, um, and then in Milwaukee, I did the Milwaukee Rep uh, production there. And, and then in uh, Southern California at uh, South Coast Rep, I did three plays there. So anyway, that was really the building block of when I, you know, of my early career and working with like amazing actors that worked in these regional theaters, like just incredible actors that you would never know. But in these regional theaters, they're playing the best roles ever written for the stage, you know, the people playing Hamlet and, you know, um, they're just amazing, amazing actors. So I learned so much doing that. And then lastly, a question that I'd love for you to ask me and what my answer would be, would be, um, uh, uh, Remembering that David knocked it out of the ballpark. Oh, David knocked it out of the ballpark. She said something dirty. Was it dirty? <laughs> Was it a little bit sexual? Sort of, sort of led to that. Yeah, a of lot of innuendo. Of course you did. Of course it did, David, a little vixen. I, 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 um, for me, um, gosh, I've told you, like literally I've told you everything. I've told you my life story. Um, you know about my stroke and you know about the music I listen to and my band and... Um, I've talked about the strike, um, a stroke and the strike, not at the same time. Um, I guess I'd love for you to ask me, what, what, how, what, how, what, what am, what am I, what is my, how do, how is the, no, I was going to say how, oh, at, to tell you about my sports career. Well. My brother is six foot four, and he was a star athlete all through high school. He set records for, as a three-point shooter. He went to college and played ba college basketball. Then I went to high school, and I didn't make the team. And that was a real, again, that was when I was like, I'm going to act <laughs> and be in the theater. I didn't make the team. And uh, this is, you've, I just told you, my brother, six foot four, set records. So he's like Jared Padalecki's height. And then little me, and I was really, like I said just now, my story was like really teeny. I was even shorter than I am now and super skinny. But they let me be the manager. And, and so in the, in the picture, when it came to picture time, uh, I was wearing a suit because I was a manager. And I got to take a picture with just like my, um, like my notepad because I would keep stats. So I got to do like... <laughs> that was my... It's a ball, there was the ball boy, then I was the manager like... So that was, um, that was my sporting career. <laughs> I was manager of the high school basketball team. And believe it or not, I got a letter. I got a letter and so, you know, letter jacket. So I got the letter and they give you a pin for what sport you play. And uh, I got a basketball and then another, I'm not making this up, another pin that says MNGR, manager. 
So I got a basketball manager pin, which, fuck yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so that's, uh, and that's when I decided to go into acting full time. <laughs> Thank you for your question. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, Rob. Hi. Uh, I guess first I have a comment. Um, I love how sincere your music is. Um, you're a great storyteller. And um, I just, I'm very appreciative that you choose to share that part of your life with us. I'm really grateful you. for that in your music. Thank you so much. Thank you. I mean that. Thanks. Thank you. Um, my question is um, a little bit more about your process. Do you, do you find it more challenging to write the lyrics or the music? And do you write them separately? Or does this song kind of evolve with the music and the lyrics at the same time? It kind of comes together. I mean, like... I think the first thing I do is I'll come up with like a, a chord progression on the guitar that I kind of like, that makes me think of a melody that would be kind of cool. Um, it's funny because I was just doing this last night and like that's kind of how it went. I've been fooling around with this chord progression for a couple of weeks and I keep rec recording it and then I keep coming back to it and changing a couple and then, you know, last night I got to the point where I was like, what? How, where would I want this song to go if I was listening to it on the radio, you know? And then you can just, I just you almost can just hear some something and then, and then you kind of go there with the chords. Anyway, I'm kind of figuring out the melody. And I found, then I finally got, I got what the chord progression of the verse and the chorus would be and the melody. And then that's when you start to put in some words. And, 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 and sometimes like a word will just sound right in a, in a chord progression, you know? And, and then you're like, wow, I'm saying, what am I saying there? And what does that kind of sound like? And that'll turn into kind of a phrase, you know what I mean? Um, you know, I don't know, and it's a go walk with an umbrella. For some reason, that's, that's, I keep, that's not it, but it's something like that, you know what I mean? And, and then you're like, umbrella really sounds good in that. To walk with an umbrella, something with an umbrella. And then I'll just go on that. And then sometimes, literally last night, I was like, what am I, what am I really feeling right now? What is this emotion? I'm like, really, what? I don't want to just write about nothing, you know what I mean? But I was mean, like, really, like, let's keep it real and keep it honest. What's, what is this, you know? And I was thinking about something that that phrase maybe fits into a thought. And if, if the planets are aligning, I can really make that make sense. And, and the, again, I'm just making this up right now, but like taking a walk with my umbrella is a rainy day song and I'm feeling kind of shitty and I wish I was feeling better and I'm walking through the city that I don't know and, you know, something like that. And then that becomes something, you know, and then... It's, it's a, you know, songwriting is a great kind of storytelling because it's like you can do something with the verses and then you can have the chorus be almost something else and then kind of link them maybe later in the song or, you know, the, the first verse can be an example and then the chorus th is the theme and the second verse is like a second example that all fit with the same theme or whatever. It's just a, an interesting um, way to tell a story or, or convey an emotion. So... Um, yeah, that's kind of where it starts. And then, like I said, if the planets align, it all makes sense. And, and then um, I try not to stop too early. I try to leave it open because you can maybe think of a better word or a better phrase or something. Um, yeah, and then as soon as I feel like I got it, then I just like record it as quickly as I can so it doesn't go away. Sure. And, and then if I feel really good about it and it's, I decide if it's a solo song or a band song, and if it's a band song, I'll send it to them and be like, hey, what do you think of this? Um, so yeah, that's kind of how it goes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for what you said. Hi, Rob. Hi. Um, just wanted to let you know that you keep me company um, in my work. I work seven graveyard shifts a, a week at a hotel, and it gets a little lonely. Yeah. But your voice uh, keeps me and the halls both occupied. <laughs> that's amazing. That's awesome. <laughs> so I appreciate that. I love that. I love music, and it's always been a part of my life as well. And sometimes in life, you get taken down a path that you didn't know you were supposed to go down. So I'm glad you didn't make the team. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Me too. Me too. And my question for you, since I'm trying to get in touch with my inner child, what would be your favorite childhood toy or game? Um, I really liked board games. Uh, you know, I grew up in the 70s and 80s, so uh, we, you know, I, I loved Monopoly um, and Sorry and, and the game of life. Life was great. Life was awesome because I, the thing about Monopoly and life I both liked is I could imagine myself like a Monopoly, like being in that little car and taking that trip, actually going to jail just because I passed go. 
what the hell? And um, anyway, like really making money and selling and buying properties. That, but then the game of life was like, I just love that idea. Like, oh, I got married, I had two kids, and you know, this that whole run, doing that whole game of life. I thought always thought was super fun. I liked Clue. I was just like board games, you know. Um, and then uh, you know, and then I've always liked any game. Like now, I like video games where I can play sports really well. <laughs> That's why I like sports video games. That's all I play because I can imagine that I'm actually really great at sports. Um, so, and when I was a kid, the only equivalent was like, there were certain like football games that was like, where you could like flip something and like make a ball go, like not a video game, but like an actual board game where you could like play football. Right, uh, like the hockey table. Exactly, yeah. or you could kind of make believe that you were actually playing the sport. Um, but yeah, board games. I was all about the board games. And I'm always open to like what the new games, my kids really like um, game, new games, a lot of card games. Um, of course, they like Cards Against Humanity. And uh, my mom was just in town and we played with my mom, which was the most hilarious thing ever. Because <laughs> uh, she, really, she really goes there. Um, but uh, yeah, anyway. But yeah, we like all kinds of games. Awesome. Thank you so much. My favorite was Stratego. What was it? Stratego. Oh, Stratego. You used to play with my dad. Yes. <laughs> Did you ever play um, Battleship? Yes. That was good, too. <laughs> I yeah. appreciate it. Have a good day. Thank you. Hey, Rob. Hi. How are you? Good. Um, is there a movie that whenever it's on, no matter how many times you've seen it already, you just leave it running? Or you'll watch? Yeah, there are a few. Like, it's funny because people often ask me, like, what's my favorite movie of all time? And I'll, and I'll name these movies. And, and it's, you know, and they're like, oh, because, like, they're just the movies that I can, like, yeah, have on. And just, you know, um, Big Lebowski. Like, if the Big Lebowski is on, I will watch it and laugh as if I'm watching it for the first time. I just really love it. And then there are more movies like um, Field of Dreams that just really gets me in the feels. As a, someone who's like father left, there's a whole father-son thing at the end that really I cry every time I see it. Um, Rocky Two. I'm sorry, just it's weird. Like if Rocky Two is on, it reminds me of my brother because we watched it together, um, and that makes me cry too. Uh, and yes, and that, that one. Yeah. Uh, and um, yeah, you know, I also like um, Dances with Wolves. Yeah. It's also like a really relaxing afternoon movie if you're, but it's really sad because it's really just, you know, sad because people are awful to other people. But I know there's something about it I always really thought it was a beautiful movie yeah. to look at. Yeah, well, whenever um, Untouchables are on, yeah. I'll leave it. Um, remember the Titans. Okay. And the replacements. Whenever oh. the, those three are on, I just leave it running. No awesome. What. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Yeah, the only th drag is a lot of times when I see those movies now, they're on like a TNT or something that runs a commercial every like seven minutes. You're like, ah! <laughs> and then you got to wait for all the drug commercials to be over and then you're back at it. And all the songs. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, awesome. I love that. Again, like on a Saturday afternoon, if like a movie like that is on, Field of Dreams, I'm in. That's great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I love now they're playing baseball games at that field in Field of Dreams. It's awesome. Hi. Hi. I, I'm uh, sad I missed your concert last night, but I was at a Stevie Nicks Billy Joel concert. What? Yeah. Where were they? Uh, Ohio Stadium. Wow. So. Um, All right, you're forgiven. <laughs> yeah, I can't miss them. Yeah. Um, my question is, um, what is your favorite song from Stevie Nicks or um, Billy Joel? Um, Stevie, gosh, um, I love Dreams. Um, I can play Dreams over and over and over again. Um, and of course, um, landslide. Yeah, but um, yeah, she's awesome. My sister was a big fan of her solo work when I was in the early '80s, so she was playing a lot at my house. And Billy Joel, same. I mean, I remember being on like we, I, what, I, the, a team I really that was good at was the theater team. We would do go to speech competitions and I'd, I'd win the like best monologue. And I, w and I had this whole thing at school where I was like, why don't we get a letter? I should get like the happy sad face and say I lettered in theater, but no. Anyway, um, uh, and we would play Billy Joel sometimes, like greatest hits on the way back on the bus or whatever and sing along. So that's, I loved, you know, um, what is it, uh, Glass Houses, I love that album. Um, 
they had a song, he was like, especially his first like two or three records was just, his songwriting was, as a lyricist, he was just amazing. Um, so, he's, yeah. He's very good at mix, mixing genres. Like one minute he'll be doing like hard rock and next season to jazz. Yeah, yeah. Um, what is it, is it Saturday night? No, what, what's something with Saturday night in it? Oh, All right for fighting, no, is that Elton John? Elton John. He has another Saturday night song, anyway. The Entertainer? No, what's another early song from Glass Houses? Um, uh, no. Yeah, and Piano Man, of course. Um, something about New York. Uh, and you know what's funny is uh, Ruth calls him Billy Joel, <laughs> and that's not a joke. She, she says, oh, and Billy Joel? <laughs> And she also says that actor, um, uh, <laughs> who's the actor that's on um, on the, the the program on H on, H on uh, Apple TV where he's in th uh, he's a therapist with uh, Harrison Ford. Jason Siegel. Jason Siegel. She says Jason Segal, <laughs> and that really makes me laugh. Oh, Jason Segal. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Glass houses. Oh, you may be right. Oh. You may be right. And it's still rock and roll to me. Come on. That's great. I may be crazy, but it just might be a lunatic you're looking for. Love that. And I wish I could play a piano like that. Like this, on a little piano up here. <laughs> anyway, good for you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Um, this has been such a cool con because there's been so much music talk. It's been Good. so yeah. phenomenal. I know. Um, and so I, I also have a music question. Okay. Um, what is the first concert you were ever taken to, like by, by a family member? And what is the first concert you ever bought tickets to yourself? First concert? Well, actually, the, what I always say, my first concert that I went to by myself that I bought tickets for is Rick Springfield. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the, mo the motels <laughs> opened up. Um, that was before you were born, I'm sure. No. But, but the first concert, that was the first concert, yeah, I went to that I bought tickets for. First concert that I just went to with family is I remember my parents went to, um, uh, in Milwaukee, there was, there's a big, Milwaukee has some big festival, like Summerfest. And we went to Summerfest because we had family friends and I was maybe eight or something. And they, we listened to Manhattan Transfer. It was kind of a doo-wop band. Um, and yeah, that was like the first one. I remember sort of running around, playing around, not really like concert, but it was like the music was going on while I was just being an eight-year-old, you know. But that was the first concert that I really remember attending. Um, and then Rick Springfield was the first one. I was like, got tickets. And then, uh, yeah. And then the the... the a huge concert memory in my mind. It wasn't my first, it was one of the first. In 1989, I saw U2 in their Joshua Tree tour, which oh. was in St. Louis, and it just, you know, had such an effect on me. But yeah. Cool, thank you. Thank you. It's funny what you say about the music questions. Yeah, I was telling Ruth last night, I was like, it's interesting because like, I do miss talking about the acting stuff too, you know what I mean? That's such a part of who I am, and I, and it's, it's hard because we can't, you know, but at the same time, I, I love music, so I love answering questions about music, too, as long as it's okay for you guys. Hi. Hi. Since you keep mentioning Dear Ruthie, have yeah. you ever been to Scotland? Oh, yeah. Uh, um, I, I've been a few times now. Um, I went for the first time in 2019, and um, yeah, and... Um, we drove all around and, you know, um, just such a beautiful country. And then, uh, yeah, I've been back with her two other times. I've been three times with her. And then I went with the band for the first time uh, a couple months ago. And the band did a tour where we played Edinburgh and Glasgow. And then we went up and played Northern Ireland. I forgot about that. Yeah. So that was, uh, so now I'm like old hat. But yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I got to meet her whole family and, you know, now we're very close and uh, yeah, it's really, ex really exciting. Just an extra little thing, since you like Pearl Jam and all that, have you ever been to Mopop in Seattle? And no. And like Prince, go. Oh, that's the museum? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I've actually been. 
Yeah, they have Pearl Jam ex exhibit yeah, there yeah, all the yeah. time. Because, yeah. And um, a Prince exhibit. I mean, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My buddy lives up there and he told me all about it. I got to go. Yeah, you yeah, should. I will. Thank you. Thanks. All right, just to cut in real quick, we have time for one more, I believe, Rob. Well, good, because we got one more person. I'm just looking at this. Is this a cigarette? Oh, no, it's like a piece of tape. I was like, who's smoking a cigarette? I thought this was like a, a cigarette that was put out on the stage. At my angle, that's what it looked like. I was like, did David, was David Hayden Jones like, favorite question? <laughs> okay. Talk to me. Okay. Um... Uh, you played a character in a movie a while ago. Well, you played it twice. Uh, you were in the food industry? Yes. Have you ever worked in the food industry? And a quick little other question. Yes. Did that button get fixed on the couch? Okay. Oh, and I, I, I would like to think I'm not the only one who's had issues. But yeah, no, it sits right here. Okay. I was, I've been wondering like all night. I know, I'm sorry. It's just, it was in my head. And I, oh great, now the host knows. Well, they knew yesterday. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I've hit it on top of another button. Oh good. So that maybe no one will notice. Yeah. Thanks. Um, yes, that movie that I was in where there was a movie and then the sequel and I'm a, a waiter and yes, I did lots of research in that um, I've been waiting tables for a long time. My, my um, job in high school, I was a bu bus boy at a, a Mexican restaurant in Colombia called Los Bandidos, which is no longer there. And, uh, and then in college, I waited tables um, at a place in Evanston, Illinois, where I went to college. And um, that was called the Noise Street Cafe. And then I came out to LA and like that's, you know, it's like being in the mailroom as an actor, you wait tables, like that was my option. And at that time it was really, I had some friends that were like, went to like more secretarial stuff or they were like assistants to people um, or, or, or temps. But I, I was really, waiting tables was, was kind of more where I wanted to go. Um, and then I waited tables at um, a place called the Carnegie Deli in Beverly Hills, which is no longer there. And I, I did that for a while. And it's a funny story, I worked with, because everyone's an actor, and I worked with Scott Foley, who I wound up being uh, in Felicity with a couple of years later, well, five, six years later. Um, and all my stuff was with him. I was a friend of his in Felicity. And then um, I went to, um, moved to this restaurant called Houston's. And there's a Houston, there's a Houston's is a chain. And there was one in Century City in LA. And I worked there for a couple of years and I got really good at it. I was like really good. I got, I went up, I was like, like ranked high. They rank you and your section's based on your rank. And I almost got too good. I was like, uh-oh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and then I got, a movie, I thought I'd made my big break. I got a movie that shot in um, Romania. And I can tell you the name of it because it was never made. It was called Hidden World 1 and 2. And I was going to go to Romania and I was like, see you, Houstons, I got a job, you know? And then um, the night before I was going to fly to Romania, they ran out of money and canceled. The whole job got canceled. So I couldn't go back to Houston's and be like, hey, about, about that. And so I got a job delivering packages. I was like a delivery boy. Um, and that was really humiliating um, job because most of the packages were like, you know, to, like to casting offices and like business people and I don't know, just didn't get treated great and anyway, but uh, then cut to whatever, seven years later I got that movie and um, I was like, I know how to do this. <laughs> so we had one scene I remember where I had to carry plates I was really good at carrying plates. I could carry like six or seven plates like do, 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 you know, and I was like, please let me carry plates in the scene because I'm good at it. So there's a scene where I'm like coming through the door and I'm, I've got like all these plates. And so I was like, it, it was all for, not for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so, and even to this day, I'm, I'm, you know, a big fan of the wait staff. I like to tip well and, you know, and what's crazy is they, they still know that movie. They still recognize me from that movie, which is funny. I was in the food industry for years. So that, that movie really hit home. Awesome, yeah. It's scary how realistic some of it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. Yep. Thank you, everybody. It's been lovely chatting. One more time for Rob Benedict. Bye. 
Hey there, this is Nolan North, and you are watching Fandom Spotlight. Good for you. Very proud of you. Now go watch more. Oh, and have fun and follow your fandom. I like that. I like it a lot.